Hello. And welcome to a bit of a different scene Yay. here on the Espace Trico podcast. <laughs> Instead of Steph with me today, I have Claudia of uh, the YouTube channel and knitting community Claude Trico. Yes. And uh, this is kind of a, a fun departure from our routine um, because we're going to talk about a special kind of collaboration we've got coming up. It's been a little while that we've been trying to pull this together, so I'm so happy to welcome you today. <laughs> Thank you for having me. To the podcast. Yes. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Claudia? Yes. Well, I'm Claudia, and uh, I've been uh, having a YouTube channel since... It's been... It's coming up on five years now, and I have a French YouTube channel. I also have an English YouTube channel that I've uh, been putting video on for a little while and um, I live in Montreal so I come to Espace Tricot a little bit and it's really one of my favorite yarn stores in Montreal so um, it was just natural for me to want to do something together for a while and uh, this little knit along that we are planning came about while chatting with Naomi and uh, I'm very excited that we present it to you today. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a sort of intro episode to um, our cardigan knit along. And we are going to talk about that, about why cardigans, mm -hmm. uh, about the projects we're planning and some details about getting you on board if you would like to join us, which would be a whole lot of fun. Yes, I really want people to embrace cardigans with us. Uh, the cold season is upon us. I don't know where you guys live, but here it's getting cold. <laughs> so the sweater mojo is like full on. I don't know about you. Yes, yes I, I'm all pullovers all the time, usually. Um, and it's, it's the same <laughs> thing for me, and I think that's part of why we wanted to do a cardigan knit along, because we are very much into pullovers, but there are so many beautiful cardigan patterns, mm -hmm. and I needed a push, and you're my push. Excellent. <laughs> well, likewise, because I think that what's, what's great about knit alongs is having that motivation, and yeah. you know, you, you don't have to do anything you don't want to knitting is all about the fun it's all about the taking the time that you need to get the result you want and to enjoy the process as well but getting in on something with other, other people can be that little motivation that yes. nudge to keep on track and to to be accountable to each other and, and have a beautiful result at the end absolutely so uh today we'll be doing a, a two-part you might see part one on this video because part one is going to be on this channel as past trico and if you want to see part two where we're going to be discussing more technical things about cardigans and how to choose patterns that will fit your body which I know we all need. Um, it's going to be on my channel, which is Clo Knits. The English channel is Clo Knits. So you can go ahead at the end of this one, obviously, finish watching this one and go <laughs> over to the next one. And of course, we'll link everything down below. Yeah. I will try to see if I am technically able to put a link on the little video screen itself. If I don't manage that, it'll be down <laughs> in the comments below, which it, is more likely. It should be doable. <laughs> Claudia is the uh, YouTube pro around here. The editor-in-chief today. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so um, let's talk about why more precisely why cardigans were a thing right now for you in mm -hmm. your in your wardrobe, maybe? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It really did come down to looking at the holes in my wardrobe for me when I think about knitting more cardigans. Um, I've always worn them. Um, they were even part of my school uniform for a while. I was wearing one daily. Um, they are excellent layering pieces, as we all know, and um, that really comes into play in a climate like ours and at a time like this, when indoor heating can be up and down and up and down and yeah. outdoors, you know, all over the place in terms of big coat, big coat off, metro, metro hot. Yeah. You go through so many temperature changes through any given day. That's interesting here. because like I basically work from home, I film from home, I do my things from home, so I don't get all those changes so much. And in the winter, I hunker down. Like I, I will go work at a cafe and things like that in the summer and in mid season. But in the winter, I just don't want to go out. So I don't get the whole like, I know that a lot of people have to yes, get dressed, go take public transport or their car, and then go into an office that might be much colder than their home. Or you know, there there's a lot of change. And even for the summer, if people work at an office, they might want to like light cardigan to wear over top of a t-shirt or whatever they're wearing that day that's cooler um so i didn't even think about that part because yeah. i just put my big woolen thick mm -hmm. pullover in my own home because we don't put a lot of heating on and then i'm fine yeah but yeah. i i totally get why it's a great layering yeah. piece. so they are 
very versatile for that reason. I find myself wearing the cardigans that I have quite a bit. And then I suddenly realized that uh, when I was sort of thinking about what kind of projects I want to knit over the course of any given year, um, or I don't know, that's an arbitrary yeah, time yeah. frame. I don't know. I don't have a, it's not like I have a meticulous yearly plan. I tend to <laughs> cast on a little haphazardly as many of you know. Um, but just sort of looking at my wardrobe, thinking about what I could knit to fit into it. And I realized that I do wear a lot of cardigans and they're all um, store-bought for the most part. Or I have one that was knitted by someone in my family mm. and I have one that I knitted many, many years ago. And those get like proportionately so much more wear in my closet than my pullovers do individually, even if I'm usually wearing pullovers. So I thought we could have more cardigans in rotation. And over the course of... Um, the last two years of owning Espouse Trico with Steph and designing patterns under the moniker Espouse Trico, I have released two cardigan patterns, one of which is this, the macaron. I will stand up a little bit. Yes, so can't see the go button. ahead. So this is a DK weight, but my first version was in fingering weight and mohair. So this is free on Ravelry. And oh, it's been getting a lot of wear since I finished it. And the first one I designed was a yoked cardigan. This is a raglan. We'll talk a little bit about what that means in the next part. Uh, although broadly, I'm sure many of you are aware of the differences, basically. Um, so the yoked cardigan I designed, the Livresque, is currently in our ebook of yokes from Espace Tricot. But if you're interested in knitting that as part of this knit along, and um, just do drop me a line by email, uh, mention the cal. Um, whether you buy yarn or not, I'd be more than happy to send you along the PDF for that cardigan so, so you can sweet. take part. Yeah. So um. I found myself being drawn to cardigans to design them to kind of fill out our offerings of patterns at Espace Trico. And then I was like, wait, knitting these for that kind of work purpose yeah. um, has made me realize I should knit more for wearing. And then of course, as I've talked about before, many of my knits end up just living at the store. So that's happened with, with some of these. Um, so I'm interested in knitting something that I will document for the store, for the cow, but that I really want to keep as a personal project for me that fits my wardrobe and yeah my uh, knitting goals yeah because you did mention like having store-bought cardigans mm -hmm. that you wear a lot so like it's interesting that you would reach for those like i i literally don't have any store-bought knits i kind of moved away from buying them because i'm always like oh i could knit that or whatever yeah, um and also i'm i guess i'm not drawn like i never go in the in the sweater section of a store anymore like i just I don't I don't shop mm -hmm. in person much, but when I do, I go to the pants, I go to like the t-shirts and the the tank yeah. tops, but never the sweaters because I'm just not even looking at it's it. It's barely worth it. Sometimes yeah. I go for inspiration to see what the trends are and everything, yeah. think about designing, but um, I've just been even those sweaters that I wear with a little bit of synthetic content have been making me so yeah sweaty and like I notice it more that I notice what effect synthetics have in my clothing. Mm -hmm. And I've just been staying away from, yeah, from that. I get Cardigans it. breathe a little bit more. And I have the ones I have, I've either had for years and years and years and years. Yeah. Like the fine knit ones that you don't really want to buy yeah, yeah, yeah. by hand. <laughs> yeah. um, but also a couple that I found on Poshmark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just yeah. Secondhand, secondhand and hand thrifted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I know what I'm looking for. Cool. Um, my reasons are, you know, a little bit similar, a little bit not, meaning like, like I said, I, I just love looking at beautiful cardigan patterns. I have this one in my uh, Ravelry, you know, I, I already downloaded the pattern. It's there, it's available. And there's so many that I find so pretty. And then somehow I always end up casting on a pullover. It's just, it's just, I'm, I'm just like pulled it's like Claudia <laughs> please knit me and then I'm like yeah but those are so cute but yes no please knit me and I don't even think like I don't I don't mind knitting back and forth mm -hmm. I'm not a pearl hater mm -hmm. I, I pearl quite fast actually so I don't mind um I'm not you know I'm not ticked off by having the sew on buttons even though that's not my favorite part and so I was trying to figure out what it was that made me not want to cast on cardigans because when it's time to wear one when I'm like okay now I'm gonna wear a cardigan over top of whatever a dress or something I want I feel like cardigans are dressier mm -hmm. so when I have an yeah. event and I'm going somewhere I, I feel like that. I want even if it's buttoned up I feel like the cardigan is a little bit more classy mm -hmm. it depends on the model obviously mm -hmm. but in my wardrobe let's say 
And then the only one I have is this one. Like, literally, I think I knitted it in 2010. It's so sweet. It's so intricate. The fit so, on that sleeve let, and, like, close up so I can see all the tiny little yeah. details. And it's beautiful. It is the Honey Bee Cardigan by Laura Chow, probably. C-H-A-U. And it's it's been on Ravelry for... The longest time it's a very uh, old cardigan and I knitted it a little bit longer I think the original one is very much cropped which was which was not my style back then which I would totally knit again cropped mm -hmm. if I you know if I had to knit it again uh with the three-quarter length it's it's very nice and I really love wearing it I've it's the one that that stayed in mm -hmm. my wardrobe uh, other cardigans I've knit have ended up you know, given to some people or just not worn because they were not very, you know, fitting on my body, mm -hmm. which we're going to talk mm -hmm. about later on my channel. But um, yeah, this one is like one of the only one. And I think the other one that I own is a buttoned up like big that I always wear basically as a pullover. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of more like a coach or a jacket. Yes, exactly. Than, yeah. and, and so... I just don't cast them on. And then I decided that it was time for me to just do it. So that's perfect. We're going to do it together. And um, uh, we'll talk about our choices and why. I have chosen the Pressed Flowers cardigan by Amy Christopher's Savory Knitting. I'm sure many of you have seen the beautiful range of the Pressed Flowers motif patterns. Yes. Um, it started with the shawl, I believe. Uh, which I have behind me so that I can show you if you're not aware exactly what we're talking about. So it is pretty. a beautiful slip stitch motif pattern with these adorable little flowers worked in a color changing yarn, although you don't have to. There are many beautiful options on Ravelry that mm -hmm. I'm looking at a lot for inspiration um, that just use single colors. You know what I've seen that was really pretty too? Yeah. I've seen two single color, like two colors Ooh. that are like done in a, so you would do one row of flowers in one color and then uh, another row of flowers in a, nice a idea. same tone, but just a tone on tone kind of thing. Sure. And then uh, just repeat them. That's, yeah. that's really cool. If that's you have nice maybe idea. just one skein of yes. a color and one skein of another. Especially another. if you're stash diving yeah, and like yeah. wanting that that's to work super out cool. for sure. Um, so this is the shawl that is a sample in our store, knit in Sandiskan, Alpaca, and Fiederbrook Farms Entropy DK, um, which is a beautiful color changing yarn that I've knit a lot with, and I'm actually going to do something a little bit different because I've knit so much with Entropy. So I'm going to go with a different color changing yarn that we have in store, the Shopper Wall is Alba Ball Crazy. Classic. And I have in my stash from a different project that I didn't finish, Ulysses in Rose Quartz. And I got this idea for this cardigan because a lot of other patterns have used it. I went to that very handy uh, yarn suggestions tab on Ravelry for this pattern. And when there are so many projects for a pattern, that's a really useful tab to go to because if there are sort of about a dozen patterns, it's not a very populated page, but when there are hundreds, you really get some good ideas. You can see like 14 other people have used Ulysses and I was able to see how that worked out. Yeah. So I'm going to swatch it with this Alba Ball Crazy. The, this is a, oh, I'm actually going to show you the one that I do want to use together. Yeah. Um, this is applied yarn, a two ply with some nylon. So it is uh, sort of finer in the ball. Yeah. So I will swatch it first, block it properly. I'll swatch in pattern um, because I really want to make sure that I make the right choice. And this Ulysses is a sport weight sort of half wool and half worsted spun. So it is fluffier, it's loftier. As a, looking at it as a strand. So I want to make sure that this doesn't end up sort of puffier and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. fluffier Overcoming. Over, and overpowering the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the two-ply sock yarn of the Zabba Ball Crazy. So my plans might slightly change if that swatch doesn't go well, but I want to swatch from stash first. At the same time, like when you look at this pattern, like there's texture mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. blips. Yeah. So it's going to make it Lift pop. A bit. Yeah. So I think it could work. I've seen a lot of people using Zalber mm -hmm. Ball in times where I was like, oh yeah, like it's quite fine. I've yeah. used it before. It's yeah. quite fine, but I guess if yeah. it works, it's not, it is not technically a sport weight like this no. pattern requires. And Entropy is actually a DK and the Alpaca, yeah. Sandiskan Alpaca is also a DK. So this shawl was knit in more of a DK gauge. Yeah. So that's why I want to make sure when I'm going off mm -hmm. script a little bit for the yarn choices, yep. I do take the time to swatch properly. Mm -hmm. And I really love these two yarns 
together. I love green and pink together. Me I too. brought out a sample. This is a fingering weight of our Montrico line, um, custom dyed for us here in Montreal. It is 100% merino and it is spun. So it's a little closer in, in construction to the Zabba ball. Now on the shelf, these look like a perfect match, but there is so much overlap. That's why they look like a perfect match, yeah. that this is really going to get hidden in a slip stitch pattern. So that's why I went with some complete contrast to the base that I'm using, um, sort of complementary. but there's no, pale pink in this and I know that every stitch is going to pop. That's something to be aware of when choosing color changing yarns. Um, I've made the mistake and even yeah. just and even also um, speckled yarns. Mm -hmm. I've chosen a speckled yarn for a pattern before where the main color was like a beige, a cream, mm -hmm. and then it had like green speckles. And then I chose a green color to go with it in the uh, Fair Isle and then at okay. some point the, the green would just overlap. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see the pattern anymore. And I was knitting and I was like, yeah. oh, did I make a mistake? And no, it was the little speckle yeah. just popping through, yeah. you know? So that can be really beautiful in terms of, you know, for striping this would yes. be beautiful. For a different kind of mosaic pattern, it would be gorgeous. Or but I really block. want those, yeah, or color blocks. But I really want those flowers to pop. So if I were to use this color, for example, maybe I'd go with something like this to contrast. Again, complementary, um, similar tonal range, but yellows and blues and grays in the base. Yeah, there's like almost a, I thought that was a green, but it's the effect of the yellow and blue yes, twisted exactly. together. It's it it green. <laughs> color theory. So That's cool. It. It. <laughs> so um, that is my rationale behind my color choices. I will keep track of my swatch and show you the results and let you know how I feel about these textures together. Yeah, I'm excited. And um, the pressed flower is also a raglan type, right? Is it it the is. Sim the similar... cardigan is. And there is also a pullover version. Yeah. And there is a cowl, a hat, and a shawl. So you have tons of options if you want to try that. If it's your first time to mosaic knitting and you want and you love this pattern, I would say yeah. the cowl is a great place to start mm -hmm. because you basically yep. work a big swatch. Yeah. And then you can wear it. Yeah. And then you can yeah. go on to knit the cardigan with us. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> there is also a pressed flowers cowl knit along going on for the next couple months. I saw passing by on Instagram with young folk knits in collaboration with cool. somebody else whose name I should have looked up. Apologies. I will link everything down below. Yeah. I don't know if I will officially participate in that cal because we've got this one going yeah. on um and you know i don't want to pressure myself too much but if you're interested in that pattern if you've been meaning to knit that whether a cardigan or no um that could be a motivation you need as well so check that out in the links below absolutely i think now that i've heard naomi chat about the pressed flower cardigan it it is now getting put on my to-do list once i'm Re recon reconcilier? Re reconcile. Re reconcile. Yes. Thank you. I was like trying to figure out. I'm like, I know there's a word for this. It's almost Once the same. I'm yeah. reconciled uh, with cardigans. Because yeah. I'm, I'm fully expecting this to like make me want to knit more of like, them. Oh, I'm a cardigan I'm, gal now. Like, I'm like, I'm gates have opened. <laughs> on it. Yes, I'm hoping. Well, it, if it, it might not change my love for pullovers, but that's okay. Oh, I hope it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so... You want to know what I'm knitting? Yeah, what are you knitting? I'm going to knit the Brienne cardigan, which is part of the Neons and Neutrals book, which is uh, Amy um, of La Bien Aimée, who created this uh, collection. So it's Brienne Moody, the, the, um, who made this pattern, and it's so cool. It is an open mm -hmm. cardigan, which that's a departure for me because... Uh, I think that one of the things, as I was talking about it, one of the things that makes me want to choose pullovers is because I'm, it gets me covered. I like pullovers that have high necks and and I like being warm. I'm generally more on the colder side, so I like having my body covered. And now I want to make an open cardigan. Um, we'll see. But the thing is, I tried it on. Mm -hmm. I tried it on when Makes all the difference. Yes, yeah. I went to um, I was at Knit City Montreal, and Amy had all her samples, and she said, "Please try this on." And I tried it on. <laughs> and it looked so good. I think I still have a picture, and that's super important just to to test your size, and you know, you knew exactly yes. which size you wanted to make based yeah. on that. Yeah, and, and I tried. I think I tried the two different sizes yeah. she had just to see how different it made the the, the look because mm -hmm. obviously choosing a size is super important mm -hmm. when you're um, choosing your, your sweaters but when I tried it on I just I just couldn't not do it and the thing was 
I had this sleeping at home. Mm. This Cory Worsted, which is what uh, the pattern calls for. Yes? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. I'm, I just wanted to make sure because <laughs> I was like, I looked at a lot of patterns there recently. Are, there are two versions of it, like yeah. everything I think in that book. Yeah. And I think the other version is in, in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. Possible. I um, love that yarn too. But the tone on tone one yeah. uh, is in Cory yeah. Worsted. So I had this sleeping in my stash because I had uh, made another sweater out of Cory Worsted and I had bought an extra skein, as you do, to as make sure do. that you have enough. But then I had this beautiful skein. I was like, this is not going to sleep in my stash. It's the, <laughs> the color is Lee's. So I brought it to Knit City thinking, hey, I could buy some more yarn mm-hmm. to make something with it. So I had already had an idea. And so when I tried the Brienne and I decided to go for a very contrasty mm. color, this is sandstone. By, uh, it's, so I bought, um, I believe it's three skeins for my size of the sandstone mm. and one skein only of the contrast color, which again, it's nice for little extra things that you have mm-hmm. in your stash that you yeah. just want to use. Uh, so Cory Worsted is just very uh, floofy, uh, a little bit um, on the rust, more rust. Mm -hmm. side when you want to talk about like itchy a Mm -hmm. little bit which I personally don't mind I love having and that's I think why the open cardigan Mm -hmm. is fine for me because it is so warm yeah like that wool is warm so even if I'm wearing something open I think I'm gonna be um I'm I'm gonna be liking it yeah also yeah go ahead it's a good type of pattern choice if you really want to knit with these beautiful rustic yarns but you're worried about whether it's going Mm. to be um sensitive on your neck especially a high neck pullover that might sit higher than your undershirt is maybe not the best choice for Mm -hmm. that yarn but an open cardigan that sits lower at the back neck that you're going to be of course wearing over something because it's a cardigan yeah um if you know those garments aren't going to touch really any part of your skin yeah that is a great choice for for using schemes like this if you're a little bit worried about sensitivity so i was looking at naomi today and we didn't plan this (laughs) ahead of time but i was telling her how because i'm always cold maybe it's time for me to buy a little higher collar uh t-shirts or long sleeve tees that i can wear my cardigans over i love turtlenecks (laughs) and i mean i love the look yeah and i've noticed that i love the look of other people wearing Mm -hmm. it but i've never made the jump to buying the turtlenecks i don't know why it's never occurred to me that that might be my solution Mm -hmm. to cardigans and also my solution to cardigans might be to have a little scarf so like i know that i've talked a lot about that with Emmy because Emmy mm-hmm. designed a little scarf because she says she wears a little scarf around her neck all the time whether it's wool or not wool yeah. or whatever she always has one and I was like that's interesting I never Good think <laughs> I never think about doing yeah. that for me it's either like the, the Big biggest shawl. freaking yeah. shawl I've ever seen or none at all yeah and I'm like well I guess that's that that having that little knitted shawl is going there instead of having mm-hmm. a high turtleneck in mm-hmm. wool like it's like wearing a wool turtleneck yeah, but absolutely. you're not <laughs> yeah because i i do really love uh cardigans that have a v-neck yes so what kind of other colors would you consider so, for this sweater if you uh, were at espace we tricot do have cory and wensley wensley worsted can be pretty much used uh, uh, sub- uh easily substituted yeah. for cory worsted they're spun to be the same weight they can also be really interestingly used together to get mm. the dimension of that warmer darker base in Cory Worsted with the bright uh, white almost off-white base of Wensley Uh, most people do find the Wensley Worsted a little bit softer now this is usually only available on her website I believe Mm. but we do have some left from the Knit City event and so I pulled together some colors Mm. my own yarn away Um, I do really like uh, I'm sure Claudia will edit in some photos for the show what we're talking (laughs) about but head to the Ravelry page too which we'll link below because I do really like that they had a high contrast version and a low contrast version because I think that's really fun to start thinking about yeah how you want to um play with the idea of sometimes solid cardigans can feel easier to fit in your wardrobe to go with the maximum number of things but tone on tone is kind of solid a fun version of solid (laughs) so i really love this together this is yellow brick road and coco on wednesday worsted i think that's really brilliant and if you wouldn't i love this color but i wouldn't necessarily do a whole thing in it so this is a fun way to bring that in Mm -hmm. But we do have some options. This is Cory to show you the difference in tone of those bases in caramel for a stronger contrast. Yep. 
And uh, then I just bought these because that's so fun and happy. <laughs> yes. But we also have lots of other yarns that would work. And something that jumped out at me would be what about a textural highlight in those bands of, um, uh, I think it's sort of a one Hello. by one color work thing. Yeah. And then a bigger a bigger band. And then and there's a, a double a cuff. cuff detail. Yeah. So I think something like either a strong pop or again, tone on tone. This is Julia Slam Boucle. 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 She didn't put the accent on it. Oh, so maybe it's book. <laughs> That's possible. Yeah. Both work. And it's capitalized. Both work. Okay. Yeah. So I think this, that we have quite a few really fun co color pops. Like, how fun are these? You can just get so unexpected. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that texture would just be so awesome. And it, I, again, against your skin, this is so soft. So like, if you're if you're doing the double oh, cuff true. and that's like the pop of yeah. cuff here on your hands it's just oh yeah little... and we have a kind of <gasps> we don't have beautiful. a huge palette of the boucle but i think that actually just gives you more ideas for unexpected combinations exactly. which i think is great and any of these are just really standing up to each other oh, yeah. i'm so inspired <laughs> Can we do another cardigan cow? Because I think I need to do the Brienne as well. Well, you know, maybe we'll have to do an annual cardigan cow. <laughs> oh, I know, so many. This is great. And then um, across the budget range, I think that uh, color changing yarn in this cardigan would be beautiful as well. Um, we as saw, the pop. As the pop, yeah. exactly. We saw some, we were looking through Ravelry again, the projects and, and the yarn suggestions. Some people have done it with uh, color changing spin cycle yeah. and different kinds of yarns. So I think that Noro Curion and Shelter together could be really great you could end up with something really beautiful if you want something really neutral yep. but still get some visual interest in there mm -hmm. um this is the color canny with um wood smoke uh so that's a really great option for bringing in some you know yeah let the yarn do the hard work for you yep. and then we also have one of my favorite and probably the softest option that I would recommend mm. for this is um, Camaro's Llama Tweed. So you get that tweedy look um, with alpaca as well. And I think this would suit a uh, open cardigan because it's going to have all that beautiful drape from the alpaca mm -hmm. without being too floppy yeah. because it does still have a good wool content. So I just, again, gravitated to pinks and greens. Um, <laughs> but if you were loving that caramel pink colorway from La Bien-Aimé and Julie Aslan, this is a really lovely alternative as well. Um, the color mahogany and pudder. And uh, we have quite a few options for sort of more neutral versions too, or tone on tone with greens, Ooh. all kinds of soft. It eh? is very soft. Really soft. So mm -hmm. veteran podcast watchers will know how much Steph and I loved this for our Baccarat Bank sweater. Um, it's, the, the color's just, it's so pleasant to knit. Really lovely for color work, which is integrated a bit into Brienne. So those are my top choices to take a look at. We'll link everything below. Corio Wensley Worsted, Julia Saint Boucle, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, Noro Curion, and Llama Tweed from Camaro are all great places to go for that 18 stitch worsted weight gauge. Yay! And it's gonna knit up fast. Yes. Love it. Yours will knit up faster than mine. <laughs> yes. Mosaic <laughs> stitch, what? sport weight. But what I have heard about the pressed flowers. Oh, oh we have a delivery. Delivery. That's what happens when you don't lock the door. That's Delivery what people uh, hard at work. Yeah, that's what happens when you <laughs> film at a yarn store. Whereas yes. when I film at home, what the the thing that makes me stop filming is my dog barking. Oh. My dog will bark at anyone. So. You know, here there's no dog, but there's deliveries. No people. dog, but there are deliveries. <laughs> All right. Um, what was I? I think I basically wrapped up. Yeah, my, my yeah. Train of thought. Exactly. There. We were oh, talking about the speed at which yes. mosaic. So <laughs> I think that people find it's really just more, it's Moorish. It's like you want to get to the next row. You want to see that flower emerge. So I think that keeps people the momentum going on well, it. Well, I think that's the brilliance of that pattern with mm -hmm. a color changing yarn mm -hmm. because yes. if you're not using a color changing yarn and you're doing mosaic could get boring I potentially, guess yes. potentially yeah. but if you're using the color changing and then you want to see what next? color the next Absolutely. flower will be which is yeah. kind of exciting yes yeah. I find that uh, some people uh, maybe she thought <laughs> that through <laughs> I think so I think so and I didn't the, the even effect think. is just so beautiful in mosaic stitch it's, yeah. it's well known so do you have a, a possible second cardigan that you would knit if you uh, had the mojo to keep going hmm. after that one well, I do find this one actually just fits so well into my wardrobe and is so versatile with different yarns. Um, you could kind have of like one, one every for every color. color. Or like <laughs> if I have a specific dress in my wardrobe and I want something specifically to go with that dress, just whip up a cardigan. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think 
I think that one is absolute, absolutely in my list. I tried it on, and uh, well, I didn't try this one on. Mm -hmm. I tried the original yeah, the sample that you made, yeah. but uh, yeah, it might jump onto my yeah. needles if uh, if my cardigan mojo is still there yeah. after the first. I also dream of knitting a full colorwork cardigan, <sighs> steeped, cut up the middle, button yes. band, little ribbon inside the button band, the full traditional style. Yeah. Um, it's one of those projects that like you always thought you'd do it if you ever got stuck at home for a significant amount of time and then the pandemic happened and I didn't buy that. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, stuck at home for that. Don't, don't we... wish that on anyone, <laughs> no. please. <laughs> no, um, but I understand what you're saying. It's, yeah. uh, it's steaks are another um, subject that I, I want to yeah. talk about eventually. Uh, I do a lot of tutorials and, yeah. and classes and steaking is one of the main things that people are scared to do on their own. Absolutely. Obviously. Yes. But uh, I, I, I love doing it the times that I have. It's extremely satisfying to, you know, I just sometimes feel like we all have a little bit of a destructive impulse in us. Where <laughs> sometimes like, what if I just cut my knitting <laughs> open? And it works. Yes. Um, I've also Very like satisfying. I've steeked a, a, a sweater. I've done a cardigan that was meant to be knit back and forth, mm -hmm. and I added the steek okay. stitches, and I just cut into it, and it was in a very very sticky yarn, okay, an unspun sticky yarn, Perfect. and I literally cut into it without. I didn't even do a securing stitch. I just sure. went straight for it, and it's one of like it's. I said that I didn't have many cardigans. Mm -hmm. I have that one and this one. That's okay. it. I have two. And right. and the other one, I didn't do the whole finishing properly because that's not my... <laughs> that kind of yarn, it'll just felt into place. Yeah, exactly. Wire, right? It just then, folds yeah. back onto itself. And yeah. then uh, I don't wear it open much. But mm -hmm. if I did, like the, the steak doesn't... If I were to wear it open, I think I would add a ribbon just to sure. make it look prettier yeah. but it you don't have to but you don't have to because it won't unravel it's stitches just stitches don't want to unravel side no, by side not at all. they're cut they're caught in that structure and they don't want to go anywhere yeah so anyway it's yeah. uh another subject for another, another day time. i guess yeah so if you would like to hear our thoughts on you know construction what works well for cardigans or different body types and all that fun stuff you can follow along on the next uh, part which is going to be on my channel clone knits excellent we'll yes. link it below link below subscribe and, like yeah. and subscribe yeah thank you so much for having me that oh, was a so lot of fun. fun yes we just natter away yeah exactly it's, so yeah. if you guys like that maybe we can have more um, collaborations in the future let us know if you had a oh, uh, fun time yeah absolutely <laughs> as far as the cal goes we'll do an instagram yes. post with all the details you can yes. we'll probably i'll put it in my our newsletter so just so you have something to reference you don't have yes. to keep watching the video for details um but we have i guess i guess a bit of admin to do to figure out days <laughs> and timeline so, and everything so, have we done that well, well, maybe we'll we figure had... it out in time to put it in part two so go over there and you'll find yes it absolutely <laughs> it's gonna be in <laughs> part <that>. two yeah <laughs> bye